Quadriceps tendinopathy presents as pain on the top side of the kneecap, which is different than patellar tendinopathy, which presents as pain on the bottom side of the kneecap. In this video, we'll talk about the mechanism behind quadriceps tendinopathy, and then we'll also go over a rehab approach, including how we'll approach quadriceps tendinopathy differently than patellar tendinopathy rehab. Quadriceps tendinopathy is an overload condition, meaning that the loads placed on the tendon have exceeded what it can tolerate, and that leads to the pain. And there's a couple of different scenarios where this can happen. For an acute overload, the most common scenario is that we just do too much too soon, and that leads to the overload on the tendon. But we can also look at things like integrating a new exercise into our program, or if we change our technique, both of these resulting in an increased load on that quadriceps tendon. And then there's chronic overload, which is another scenario where there's just been prolonged overloading of the quadriceps tendon and insufficient rest. And so over a longer period of time, the tendon isn't able to tolerate those loads and that's leading to the pain. When looking at the mechanism, jumper's knee is a common term used to describe knee pain related to jumping. And this is typically in reference to the patellar tendon. But as the upstairs neighbor, the quadriceps tendon can also be overloaded from jumping. However, the quadriceps tendon is loaded more in deeper knee flexion compared to the patellar tendon. So it's more common in weightlifting where we have higher loads in deeper knee flexion, such as when we do a squat or a lunge. The rehab approach for quadriceps tendinopathy generally follows a three-phase approach. First isometrics, then isotonics, and then finally return to sport. Within each phase, our goal is to load the knee more into knee flexion because that'll emphasize more of the quadriceps tendon versus the patellar tendon, but this obviously depends on our tolerance to load. And then when we look at the rehab program overall, we ideally want it to last at least 12 weeks because this will give the tendon enough time to adapt to the loads. An isometric contraction is where the quads contract but the knee actually doesn't move. And this can be a useful starting place for a really sensitive tendon that doesn't tolerate much load as it gives us the most control over the range of motion that we're loading in as well as the load of the exercise. One option for an isometric exercise for the quads is to use either a heavy exercise band or a seated knee extension machine at the gym. And depending on the tolerance, starting with the knee flexed to around 60 degrees and then gradually progressing into around 90 degrees so that we're emphasizing more of that quadriceps tendon. Ideally, when we're performing isometric contractions, we're holding for somewhere between 30 to 45 seconds and then repeating for three to five repetitions. Another option is to perform a Spanish squat. And the way to think about this is that it's a wall sit flipped around, which makes it a little bit more challenging because it puts more load on the quads and therefore the quad tendon. Ideally, we're trying to get to that 90 degrees of flexion for the knees, but again, we can start a little bit higher and gradually work our way down, which would just load that quadriceps tendon a little bit more. Isotonic contractions are what we normally think about when we think about strengthening a muscle or a tendon. When the muscle contracts, the knee is going to flex and extend. And it's important when we perform isotonic contractions specifically for the tendon, we wanna perform them slowly because time under tension is an important factor. So we wanna perform each rep over six to eight seconds. The most simple way to get started with isotonic loading is to use that same exercise band that we just used for isometric loading, but now we're going to slowly flex and extend the knee under load. Based on the mechanics, it can be a little bit more challenging with this exercise to load under more knee flexion. So there's a couple of different variations that we can also use. A prone knee extension is one option that we can use. By laying on our stomach, we're able to use an exercise band or a cable machine to load a little bit more in knee flexion. Whenever we're performing isotonic exercises, ideally we wanna perform three sets of 15 reps under moderate to high load, which is usually around 50% to 90% of max. Another option is to perform either a split squat or a front foot elevated split squat, which will allow us to load the knee into deeper knee flexion. Again, tempo is important whenever we're performing isotonic loading, so we wanna follow a 303 tempo, which is a three to four second contraction down with the eccentric, followed by zero pause at the bottom, and then a three to four second contraction back for the concentric muscle contraction. And the final exercise progression is to perform a reverse Nordic, which is a heavy eccentric muscle contraction for the quads, which will load the knee at the end range of knee flexion. Typically, these are only performed with the eccentric emphasis, so just slowly lowering the body down towards the ground. But if we can do the concentric contraction to bring us back up to that original starting position, then we can do that as there's no need to just isolate that eccentric muscle contraction. These aren't necessary in all rehab programs, but if we're looking at building a really robust quad and quad tendon, then we might wanna add this in for some injury prevention. Then finally, when we're looking at return to sport, our exercise selection really depends on what sport we're trying to return back to. 
If we're a jumping athlete, so we play volleyball or basketball, then we want to add some plyometrics so we're exposing the tendon to some jumps. So maybe starting with some hops, then some double leg jumps, and then some single leg jumps to mimic what we're going to experience when we turn back to sport. And if we're looking at returning back to weightlifting, then we just want to make sure that we're gradually increasing the weights that we're using with the exercises slowly, so that way we're not setting ourselves up for another overload issue. Because remember with the rehab process, there might have been a time where you stopped lifting or you deloaded a little bit, and so we might not have the same capacity that we left off with. So we just want to make sure that we're gradually increasing the weights that we're using, so that way we don't have another overload issue. So hopefully this video on quadriceps tendinopathy was helpful. If it was, go ahead and leave a comment down below with some encouragement for somebody else that's maybe dealing with some quadriceps tendinopathy. If you want to help out the channel, hit the subscribe button over here. I'll see you in the next video.